Hey guys, now you remember I was having some problems with my power. Uh, being using computer PSUs is not really the best idea for having car audio in a house as it only gives out about 11.8 volts, right? Um, so I come up with a new type of power supply, well I say new, it's probably been done before but basically this is how it works. Here I've got a transformer that was out of a 5.1 surround sound amplifier, it was quite a hefty amplifier um, and so this kicks out about 12 volts. I've then got three bridge rectifiers. Now what these do is they change AC current into DC current. I'm going to hook it up to these two batteries that I found in the old electric scooter 13.5 to 14 volt batteries and but they seem to charge okay on 15 volts so that's quite nice and handy and then that goes straight up to the amp. So now it's bye bye Mr. Power Cap. Although I want to use this in my new setup, and then it's bye bye Mr. PSUs. Then the Hello Bear Ridge Transformer Power Supply thing. And when you're connecting wires together, guys, never, never, never just twist the wires together in any way. That's not safe. What way you want to do is you want to use what's called a chocolate bar or binding posts. You just shove the wires in either end and screw them down nice and tight and that way they're not going anywhere and it's the safest connection you can make. Lock that power cable tightly down. I'm using the original lo uh, cable locker. There you go, that cable's not going anywhere anytime soon. Now I've got the bridge rectifiers fitted in. Time to slot in the batteries. Oh, nicely fit. And um, I whack a switch between the batteries and the transformer so the batteries don't decharge through the mains. So I've got a switch there. Now I've got the switch all wired in and uh, the battery, transformer, bridge rectifiers and the remote lead that goes to the amp uh, that's, sweet, that's on a switch. Something well. very interesting um, using this thick ass power cable that came with the amp uh, the amp won't turn on because it's getting too much current, too much power to higher voltage when it's in a little red light flashing it doesn't want to turn on however if I replace these red thick cables with, the, with these thinner green speaker cables, then it turns on. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to down, downgrade my wires in order for my amp to receive the correct voltage power. And I thought the success comes about when I use a thinner wire, this orange piece of wire, much, much thinner than that uh, power cable I have with the amp. Uh, and I'm running at 16.3, which enables my amp to power on, which brings it down to about 16 volts, 9, 15.0. Running. I've managed to include the power cap as well, which is brilliant. Right, I'll show you how it works. This is how it works. Right, first of all, I've got capacitor, batteries, remote to amp, right? So, first thing I have to do is I have to charge the cap. Turn the cap on first, then turn the batteries on. That charges the cap nice and slowly. There you see there. And just take the filament bulb out which is quite hot actually, it gets hot quite quick. Turn the power on, which is this one. That knocks everything up to about 15 volts, which the amp sits happily on. I will get around to changing the um, transformer to a much higher power. I've got a, uh, I've got an old microwave downstairs that's got a transformer in it, and they whack out 12 volts if they, you reverse them round. So that should be more ideal than this temporary solution that I can think of. You know, compared to a crappy PSU down there. There you go, guys. If you've ever got any old stuff that you think are oh, don't need that anymore, just. Just think about what might you use it for in the future. So don't always throw things away as soon as you don't need them anymore. Just think, mm, what could I use that for? Uh, plug this shit in. Hopefully it don't go pop. 